Bang, bang. What's going on, guys? Hope you guys are really excited about this interview. I really enjoyed it. I think you will as well. But before we get into that, make sure that you like this video so that more people on YouTube can find it. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And don't forget that BlockFi is the sponsor today. They've got three products you can buy and sell crypto on their crypto exchange. You can deposit crypto and earn up to 8.6% APY in an interest-bearing account, or you can deposit crypto and take out a US dollar loan against your crypto collateral. You can use the description right here, or you can go to blockfi.com slash pomp to learn more. All right, let's get into this episode. I hope you guys enjoy this one. All right, guys. Bang, bang. I've got Alex here with me. What's up, man? What's going on? We're doing doing it in Miami. (laughs) Yes, we are. All right. What the hell is Zed? Zed Zed.run has like taken over the world. It's digital horse racing. Yeah, so I got into it about a month and a half ago. All right, that scares everyone immediately when it's only six weeks, but that's so, important context. Yeah, I've got, I got into it about a month and a half ago, almost two months ago. Uh, some like backstory. I have a friend, Drew, Drew Austin. He's a great guy. He runs this thing called Redbeard Ventures. And um, he tried to get me into NBA Top Shot in like early, well, and tried to get me into NBA Top Shot like October, November, December time of the past year. And that of was 2020. Like, of that, yeah. And that was really early. That would have been a good time to get an yes. NBA top shot. All right. And then he was in Miami actually at the end of the year, beginning of beginning of January, end of December. And we were sitting down at some hotel and he was like showing me, he's like, I just spent like fifteen hundred bucks and I bought this like Zion Williamson cosmic hollow, like one out of fifty. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, why are you spending, you just flushed 1,500 bucks down the toilet. And he's like, no, I bought like a John Moran. I bought this like Vince Carter last shot, all these like cosmic hollows, whatever. I was like, what's going on? He's like, just buy a pack, experience it. it. Took me about a week to buy a pack. And when I did, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like the, the opening of it. And uh, anyway, flash forward about a month later, his portfolio is worth about over $2 million on a okay. $50,000 investment. It's pretty uh, good. I'm no mathematician, but that's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, and that that was a really expensive week because that week I could have bought like a few like le- legendary packs for like, you know, 200 bucks, which anything you got there is worth, you know, f- 3K plus. Um, and I was like, oh, OK, I got to listen to Drew next time. Drew and I started this like m- weekly event. And there's there's context to this backstory. But Drew and I started this like weekly event uh, on, on the company I run called Upstream. Uh, we have an NFT community. We meet every Friday at 1 p.m. And every week we talk about something different. So the first week we talked about Top Shot. The second week I think we talked about Genies. Then the week after we had like Akash, who's the founder of Genies. They were launching some NFT stuff. And then on Wednesday, I was like, hey, Drew, who should we have this this weekend? He's like, oh, I'm getting into this thing called Zed. Um, I'm actually buying a bunch of horses for some friends. Do you want me to buy you a horse uh, or a few horses? I was like, dude, what are you talking about? Like I, digital horses, yeah. not real well, horses. I, well, first I was like, I don't need a horse. Like, And he's like, no, it's digital horses. You race them, you breed them. It's, he's like, I don't have time to explain right now, but let me know if you want me to buy you some horses. And I was like, all right, I didn't listen to you last time. Like how much ETH do I need to send you to get like a nice whatever, whatever you're doing? So I sent him a little bit of money. Um, how much? Uh, <laughs> I think it's in like 5K in ETH. Okay. And then, and then... On Friday, we started talking about this thing called Zed. Um, which and was that for one horse? Or like no, he got horses? me like a few. This was still early, so it wasn't super expensive yet. Uh, he so got you were me, like you're like a horse empire. <laughs> no, he got me like five horses. It was like a few Z, one Z three, Z four, Z five, and a few Z like nines and tens. Um, which I'll explain all what that means in a minute. Um, and what what he ended up doing is on Friday we started talking about it, and I was like. Oh wait, Drew, is this the thing you bought me earlier this week? And he's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Oh, this is actually really cool." Uh, anyway, that night was a was a drop, uh, and they released like two hundred horses. And Drew had said, you know, a month before that event we did, uh, it took about like twelve hours or like twenty four hours to sell out the horses. And then the next week, because they were doing drops every Friday, the next week it took like it, it was cut in half. It was like twelve hours or six hours. Then it was like six hours or three hours. After we did that event on Upstream and after, because after, there was like 50 to 100 people there, they sold out the horses in about 10 minutes. And then from there on, you can barely get a horse in the drop. I mean, it's it's really hard. Um, so in terms of, that's how I got into it. Okay. Um, and I bought a bunch of horses that night. I I have at least 27 horses myself. <laughs> My dad's got nine. I share a stable with Drew. We have another seven. We've got like one or two like pretty rare 
coats and uh, early mints. And then I share another stable with a friend named Narendra. And he uh, he built this whole algorithm to figure out like rare and super rare coats. Um, so yeah, it's I've got so you own like fifty horses. About like I, I own and co-own about fifty horses. All right, but in terms of what what Zed is, I mean it, it's digital horse racing. So the idea is what I say, I say that like it's like normal Duh. A normal <laughs> thing. But um, yeah, it's you know I, I personally believe like ninety percent of NFTs are going to be wor- worthless. I think the things that are going to stay are going to be things with strong IP. So mm-hmm. things like you know the M- NBA Top Shot, MLB. UFC, NFL, eventually someone will do, you know, soccer is going to be massive when it comes out because that has that's IP. I think when, you know, movies like uh, everything from Star Wars to Marvel to Disney, they have strong IP. Well, so my whole thing isn't so much just the IP, like the IP is important, obviously. Yeah. But uh, the one that like I saw and I was like, oh, wow, this is really cool is uh, there's something called So Rare. Uh, oh yeah, which uh, Benchmark recently invested in. And uh, what they essentially did was it's like fantasy football for soccer or uh, yeah. uh, football, as people abroad will call it. And uh, you basically don't get to just draft players and then play like you do, you know, like Yahoo Fantasy Football or whatever. Instead, you basically have to buy, and then you have the token, and then you can trade, and you can use certain players and all this stuff. And so to me, it's not so much just like buying this thing, holding it, and speculating that the price is going to go up. The utility of the only way to play the game is to have So it. that's the other thing. That's exactly. exactly. So like IP is important. And then the other thing that's going to last, well, I think there's actually three things that are last. It's IP, I think utility. So just buying it and selling it, that's great. But if you can make money, if you can earn some sort of benefit. Like a access, return or a yield yeah, off a yield of it. Or an it. access to a, a location, uh, digital or physical. If there's some sort of utility to it, I think those things are going to be interesting and last. And then the last, I think, is the art world. I think, you know, crypto art, digital art, you know, it's, it's just a mimic of physical art. I don't personally get a lot of art. But I know that there's a market for that, mm-hmm. the scarcity, the rarity, et cetera. I think the cash grabs are going to go away. I think the people that don't uh, take you know, time to figure out exactly what makes sense. I think, I mean, this past week was a crazy week for NFTs. I mean, there was everything from, I don't know if you saw Appimon, uh, which is like a, a <laughs> you're going to think it's even more crazy, but it's like, a, it's like an egg that you can open. So there's like 6,000 of them. And in the egg, there's like this creature. And some of them are going to be rare. Some of them are going to be like common. Dinos- like dinosaurs. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like little, like it's sort of like LOL surprise. I don't know if you know LOL surprise. You don't have a, nope. any young children. Nope. They did $9 billion in revenue last year. What is LOL surprise? It's literally, a, if you have a young daughter, you probably have seen it. It's, it's, um, it's a toy. And then you get an egg. And then you open the egg. And in the egg is a surprise. And it's one of the characters. And there's some rare ones. There's some common ones. Got it. Uh, they did nine billion revenue last year. It's a physical toy company. If you go to any like CVS, Walgreens, and you go to the toy section, you'll see LOL surprise everywhere. Okay. Um, and so now but, there's a digital version. So yeah, this thing called Appymon. Then there's this thing called um, uh, the Board Eight Yacht, Yacht Club that launched. <laughs> what is that? And it's like you get you buy like this. You get a yacht? No, you get like an ape, and the ape is like uh, whatever. We don't need to get into the specifics, but like. That you thing. know that all this sounds crazy. This sounds insane. Okay. Uh, but the thing that's really interesting about Board uh, Board Ape Yacht Club mm-hmm. is that they're giving you, if you own an ape, you can get access to a virtual place. Okay. This Yacht Club. And only other people who own apes can come. So you think about, okay, if you own a token or you own this NFT, you can theoretically get access to a digital place or a physical place that nobody else can go to unless you're a token owner or an NFT owner. I just think that that gets to be really interesting. Mm-hmm. They, these things all launched like this week, but at the same time, they're, they seem to be very thoughtful, well-designed, and been in the works for a while. But but back to Zed. So Zed is horse racing. Zed is horse racing. Digitally. Digital horse racing. And so when you go into the system, you can buy a horse, uh, you can buy a horse during a drop. Okay. And then you can also buy it on, I think, OpenSea. Okay. And then also- How many total horses are there? So or we don't know yet. Yeah, no, we, we do know, but there's, it's 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 important to, to, to understand actually how it works. So right now we're still in the midst. So it's actually still really early for Zed. There's gonna be 38,000 Genesis horses. The rumor is they'll probably go through the Genesis horses by the end of the summer, maybe by the end of the year. Um, I think there's only 13,000 of those 30, 37 or 38,000 that have been released. There's a rumor that this Friday, um, there's going to be a, a, I mean, it's not a rumor. It's going to be this Friday. There's something called a Terra drop. There's either going to be 5,000 or 7,000 or 10,000 horses 
that are going to be available f- directly all from at Zed, one time all at one time try um, buy one yeah you should yeah. but i think you need to own eth then right i think you're you've been on the on the record of not owning any ETH. i own no ETH. i can gift you your first horse if you want i can make you a baby but i only horse. want the best like i want the winner like i want the secretarian of uh, of all the horses uh yeah well then you have is to that s- the name of the the horse that won this thing Se- i think it's secretariat secretariat yeah see how yeah, well, i'm basically that, a that's, horse that's professional a, there's biscuit there's secretariat there's american pharaoh biscuit is uh, a good one too. american pharaoh was the most recent one that went okay so pharaoh. american pharaoh i want the equivalent of american pharaoh in uh zed how do i get that uh how have, much would it cost me how much would it cost you i mean i i've heard that they like, probably, like is there they, one they, horse they that everyone's like that's the winner yeah there's like there's breathless edge there's ducky mallon there's these ho- these horses are becoming a little famous because they're such breathless winners. Breathless Edge, Breathless Edge is one. Uh, Ducky undefeated? Mountain is one. No, but like a thirty percent win rate. Uh, I want an undefeated one. There's no undefeated. Actually, there was. The reason why breeding is not available right now is because when they brought be- breeding back, there was a. It wasn't. I don't know if it was a bug, but some horses got four parent DNA. I didn't get into breeding yet, but I'll get into that in a second. And these horses were like freaks of nature. I think there was one called Escobar. Yeah, I want Escobar. There that you go. Was a like, freak of nature named Escobar. That's the horse. That I was, want. Who owns that one? Yeah, I don't know. But it was <laughs> the, horse, the first ten races. The horse was ten and zero, and people were, and but it was like winning. You get odds and stuff, and it was yeah. winning by like 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 multiple seconds. Escobar sounds like a champion. That's what I need. Yeah, I think that <laughs> when they bring bring it back, they're gonna lo- they've changed some things and it'll, it'll be fixed. Are they but- gonna like take away Escobar's skills? No, I I I don't know hundred percent know how it works, but I think that they the things they take into account, they're gonna have to change stuff because you can't change Escobar's abilities because it's on the blockchain. So you have to sort of I, I'm not a hundred percent sure how it works. How they're gonna change the odds? They're they're gonna rig the game because no, Escobar is so no, dominant. No, it's gonna be the same. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no, they're gonna be they're gonna have to level it up so that everyone has like that that same situation. Got it. But okay. anyway, so so going back, so thirty eight thousand Genesis horses. These are minted by Zed, and they are th- there's there's ten levels. So there's Z1 to Z10. Z standing for Zed. Z1 to Z10. Z1 is the most uh, scarce. Z10 is the most least scarce. Uh, uh, the least scarce. Um, Z1 is called Nakamoto, after it's good. S- it's a good name. Satoshi. So that's Z1 and Z2 are both Nakamotos. There's a thousand Z1 Nakamotos. There's a thousand Z2 Nakamotos. In the last drop, a Z1 Nakamoto uh, was selling directly from Zed, not like a resale value, directly from Zed for about sixteen thousand dollars horse. Okay. okay. Z three and four are called Zabo, named after I think Nick Nick, Nick Zabo. Uh, there's two thousand Z threes, two thousand Z fours. Then there's Z five, six, and seven are Finny after Hal Finney. And then eight, nine, and ten is buterin or butterin or you know vitalik. vitalik. Z ten, I think there's going to be about twenty thousand, and I may be getting the number off a little bit, but I think there's about going to be about twenty thousand Z ten buterins. Okay, so that's going to be the most common. In the last drop, I think a buterin went for about a hundred, hundred twenty dollars, um, and those are the most common you'll see. Now, okay, so that's thirty eight thousand Genesis horses. There will never be more Genesis horses, and they're still releasing them, which means it's still still early. And then they all go have sex with each other. <laughs> yeah, it's called digitally. It's called the stud farm. And yes, stud farm. Yeah, it's called the okay. stud farm. Okay, explain. Okay, so then then there's breeding. I need to get in the horse game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's what it actually. So there's male and female horses. There's uh it, the un un when you don't have any offspring, you, um it's a a filly for a female and then a cult for a male. Okay. And then once you have a child, you're a mare for a female, and then you're a uh, stallion for a male. Okay. Now. There's a stud farm. The other thing that's actually worth noting is there's there's also um, there's also coats. So there's uh, common coats like the color of their their coat. Then there's rare, and then there's uh, like super rare or something like that. Um, so there are some really like what, ra- what does rare Escobar coats. have? It's got to be rare. I want to I want to say I think it was like fire brick. Uh, okay. I could be getting. Is that I think rare? It was red. I think it was a rare or a super rare. Oh I'm not God. sure. You got a red horse that's just cleaning the competition. Yeah, right. yeah. It was. I think I, I'm, I'm. I should go buy Escobar before we release this. Before somebody jacks up the price on me. If I want to go buy it, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Well, I think Escobar came down to earth in terms okay. of the the value. So and yeah, I mean value also. But 
Uh, by the way, most of the people who own these like really like champion horses, there's really no reason for them to sell it to you. Why? Because they can make money without selling it to you. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's kind of like, so like cash flow, right? For like, example, you just buy them out. the second horse ever minted was called a horse called Wall Street. It's also a pretty good horse. It has like a 20% win rate or like between 15 and 20% is pretty solid. Wall Street can put itself in the stud farm and charge $1,000 to breed with Wall Street. And people will pay $1,000 to get an offspring of Wall Street. How much sex can the horse have? So that, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, so, because I actually, way- I, I recently looked at, my brother was telling me the amount of uh, breeding that a champion horse, like a Kentucky Derby champion horse, is between 100 and 250 times a year. And then they also fly them around the world with physical horses uh, because they have to be in warm weather, I think. So they basically go from hemisphere to hemisphere to make sure that it can get extra breeding on a uh, annual basis. That's crazy, but that, that's actually randomly similar to how actually uh, it works. Okay. That. So, so work? um, when r- r- the stud farm is currently closed, it's going to be hopefully opened up. I-, I think they're waiting for the drop to happen and then they're going to. Are they like closing it because it's still kind of like a beta? And no, they closed it because there was the bug. There was like the bre- oh, okay. people were breeding these free courses and like Got that it. were just Escobar. Like, yeah, Escobar. And there was another, there's like one or two more. Um, by, by the way, this is like the most crypto thing in the world. I'm hearing about horses named Wall Street and Escobar. Basically the same two types of people. They're both criminal organizations. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. But by the way, so actually the Zed Genesis horses are named by the employees of Zed. Okay. And then the offspring is named by the users. Okay. So like if I like make a baby for you, mm-hmm. then you can name it. If you wanted to, if somebody just hears that clip, they're going to think we're crazy. Yeah. Uh, all but, right. Okay. So, so if I put Wall Street okay, into so, the but, stud farm, so how the stud farm works, you put males into the stud farm. Yeah. Okay. So you put the male horses in. Every two weeks, they can have seven offspring. Okay. So you, as the owner of that male horse, you put it in there, and you dictate how much it costs to to mate with your horse. So if you have a Z1 Nakamoto named Wall Street. You might charge a thousand bucks to to breed with it, just because you probably can get seven horses. You is know, that high? seven offspring. No, I mean, so I one night I just wanted to experience it. I put I just wanted to experience this stuff. <laughs> um, I put I put I have a Z one. I put one. I oh, put, you got like one of the big dogs. I have one of I have I have three Z ones now. Three but, Z ones. All right. How much yeah. did you? How much do they cost you? Uh, I uh, <laughs> about ten to twelve k each. Okay. And then, so let's say thirty thousand dollars. You're in on the Z ones, yeah. And you put them in the stud farm, all yeah. of them. So, well, actually, so I own three myself, and then I share two with Drew. So I have a few. Honestly, I I put some money into this. I yeah, think it sounds I, like it. But I've also so I put. Are we one, making money or losing money though? N- well, I mean, obviously, I put out money. But for an example, I put my Z one into the stud farm, and uh, within twelve hours, I, I charged six hundred dollars to mate with it, or okay. five five hundred or six hundred dollars. I just wanted to see if it would go. But I went and I did this at like midnight. I went to bed, woke up. I had 3K in my... my. Oh, people were trying to mate. I was all mated. It was all seven. It was done. That 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 ah. Meaning I made three grand off a horse I bought for like 10 grand. You made three grand off a digital hours. horse having sex with another digital horse. <laughs> with multiple digital horses. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I did. And this is why I'm fascinated by this because it feels like it's a recreation of exactly what happened in the analog world and it's going to happen again in the digital world. And there is the opportunity to be the greatest horseman in the world. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the other thing is I have a horse called Winter Winter Wonderland. Okay. It's a rare coat. Sir- did you name that? No, that was okay. it was a it was a Genesis horse. Um Winter Wonderland has uh is a Z4 or Z5. Okay. And it's a it's a rare coat, Sir Aquamarine, and I put it in the stud farm also. And Winter Wonderland has raced in one match, and it won that match, so it is a hundred percent win rate. <laughs> okay, and I put it. You in sound there. Like, you sound like the finance kids on TikTok that are like, I have one stock, and the stock went up. <laughs> Go ahead, but no, I I I hundred percent racing rate? it. I stopped. Ra- I mean, like you're not gonna get better than hundred percent. Like, okay, you know, okay, okay, it's, yeah, it's only one for one. Put it in the stud farm. Also, seven horses, twelve hours. It was How all much? gone. I put it for like two hundred each because okay. it's it's not a Z one. So I put it for two hundred each. Made like done. Made like a, a grand easy, and I didn't even spend a grand to buy it. Or maybe I did. I don't know. I that was one of the ones Drew got me originally. Um, so seven seven offspring, only raced once. 
I look at I I went back. Do you and get I, a cut on the? Yeah, offspring? and so does that. Uh, no, not on the offspring. I get a cut to breed. Yeah. So yeah. that the person who has the female horse pays you. Pays. Um, who through, owns the baby horse? The female. Ah, uh, got it. So is it better to have the male or the female? You can make more money instantly by male, but female. I mean, you could resell the the, the children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounded really bad. This sounds you, ridiculous. You could, you could you could resell the offspring. Okay. Yeah. That also sounds so ridiculous. here's my question. Is, Wait, but, but, so the reason, well, the last thing, the reason that I brought that up is one of the children is a champion horse. So I looked through because you you could see all the yeah, lineage. Yeah, yeah. I looked. There's a, there's a I think it's called Night Queen, and it's like a champion horse. It's got like forty plus wins, and the, whoever bred it has just been racing it, and it's a good horse. See, because that's does the that thing. mean your horse this is good? Probably because but you don't want to race it. Because then you I don't want to race it. Because well, I won the hundred percent. I think I could just get an annuity of like a thousand bucks every two weeks just from that. Like yep. not even thinking about it. Twenty four grand a year. So that but, was math. You see that both yeah. math. That's <laughs> yeah, pretty that was, good. Right? That's pretty good math. <laughs> um, but that that uh, that the Z one that I have is not raced. So you don't know, like, so that oh, so you got a, a Z one, but you never raced it. I never raced it, and, but and that's so people people think if it's I, a good one. But if we I don't have know. a Z, well, it's sort of like getting. Imagine you can get an unopened, you know, NBA Top Shot pack, right? And it's a Cosmic Hollow Series One. So you can get a LeBron, you can get a Zion in there, but you also can get like, even though they're still, I mean, if you're a basketball player, yeah, you're yeah. good. But like, you can get like a CD Osman and a Langston Galloway. Great, you know, good players, serviceable players, but, but not they're not LeBron or Zion. So, yeah. so if you have a Z one and then it loses its first two races, it's, then you don't you don't want that. That's it worthless. Immediately lowers the value. But if you see that the offspring are good, then the value can all right. Go so up. I, I got to give you a piece of context here because I've been sandbagging. So uh, the reason why I'm so fascinated by this is in 2016, I believe it was, I went to Nigeria. And in Nigeria, uh, I went with uh, somebody who's building like a um, uh, chat app for soccer. And uh, we had a like local who was a user of that app take us around. And I'm, when I say when I went to Nigeria, most people go and they say at Victoria Island, which is like where all the tourists stay. We stayed in Lagos. Like there's dudes with AK-47 standing outside the hotel and like it looks like it's secure, but if somebody starts shooting, they're definitely running. So, <laughs> so you're like in Lagos, right? Uh, and it was about, I don't know, uh, a mile from a place called Computer Village in Nigeria. And Computer Village is, uh, think of like the busiest you've ever seen Times Square. Exactly like that. And it is just packed almost like a like a flea market would be. There's stalls and stores and all this stuff. And in some, in some of the places, it's two or three stories. Uh, and it's just people everywhere. And what's fascinating about it is they are so in touch with technology. It's probably, I literally wrote a piece when I came back and I was like, I saw the future of consumer uh, technology by looking uh, in this one little place called Computer Village. Demographics of Nigeria are off the chart, population growth incredibly fast, uh, very, very digital native, and then they've now got smartphones, internet access, all stuff. So while we're there, we have some time to burn. And the local takes us to a equivalent of like, I'll call it a betting house. I don't know what they call it. And while we were there, we had like watched uh, soccer games in people's backyards and like done all this stuff. And like there, there's a whole little economy around uh, soccer and viewing. But we go to this bet house and literally uh, think of it almost like the cage at a casino. So people are sitting in chairs. They're watching games on television. They get up. They walk over. They place their bet. They get a little piece of paper. They go sit back down. Did I win? Did I lose? Go back. And, they just, and they're doing this all day long, right? But then all of a sudden I noticed that everyone at all times was watching one of the screens on the far right. What's going on on that screen? Why is that one not have commercials? What, what's going on over there? And that was also the one that I quickly realized was having the most betting activity. It was a simulation. It was like, you know when we play video games yeah. and like you're playing like a soccer game or a football game or whatever and you just hit simulate and the game basically plays the game yeah. and then it just tells you like, oh, the Green Bay Packers won, right? Yeah. Which never really happens in real life. The Giants are the best team. Uh, and so... I remember sitting there being like, these people are betting on a simulation in a video game. That's nuts. Because as an American, guess what my first thing is? It's rigged. <laughs> There's yeah. no way it's fair. right? Yeah. Like, like somehow it is rigged. <laughs> but they were betting all day, every day. So when I saw that, I remember just putting that in the back of my head. Like, that's an interesting thing. It went about my day. When I saw the digital horse racing, that's the first thing I thought of. I said, oh, my God. Somebody figured out how to do this. I have no clue. Is it rigged? Is it not rigged? Does it work? Does it not work? Whatever. Yeah. But somebody figured out how to take that exact same experience and now bring it to a global basis, and it's around horse racing. And that seems pretty interesting to me. So 
it feels like the only three things you can really do are one, you can buy a horse, mm -hmm. you can race it. You can buy a horse, you can put it in the stud farm, breed right. it, or you can basically create more horses and then go race those horses. Fair? Uh, yeah. And by the way, seven male horses every two weeks when you breed, two, uh, every female horse can have two offspring every two weeks. Okay. So meaning when you originally said they, like they could do 150, if you do the math, seven every two weeks, 14 a month, you're, you're getting pretty close to the actual, yeah. and, and maybe that's how they actually So 100 to 250 is the uh, is the number. So it's like 100 on average versus, uh, I think it was uh, 250 if they move them all around the world, you know, different hemispheres. Yeah, so uh, in terms of, in terms of um, breeding, you know, only two from the female, which I don't know if that's real life. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, like. I don't know what the pregnancy of women, uh, female horses are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Off the top of my head, neither do I. Um, I don't think they're one week at a time though. <laughs> yeah, no, it's probably not. <laughs> but, uh, but, in, but in terms of, yeah, so I mean, breeding. So it's buying and holding, breeding, uh, and, um, and like making money off that. So I've, I've made some money off that. And then racing. Now, how does the racing work and how do you know it's not rigged? So there's a bunch of white papers that I've read like a few sentences of, uh, and there's a bunch of, there's an article they wrote about like, it's called like provably fair. Now the way that they describe it is there's 10,000 simulations mm -hmm. of each race and they, there's one that's chosen at random to be that race. So when you go up against 11 other horses, cause there's 12 horses, one of those, uh, like everyone has odds. So, so if I, if I have the odds of winning 20 out of a hundred times, you just extrapolate that out to 10,000 simulations. And then basically that's the odds. And then they run each simulation and then they literally just pick, okay, simulation 7,432 is, is the one, is the the one everyone's going to see. And that's somehow randomly selected. And when that occurs based on the odds that my horse has of winning out of every hundred or a thousand or 10,000 races, then that's the odds for that specific race. Yeah. Um, exactly. That's how I understand it. Um, that seems complex enough where like that would be pretty hard to gain. Yes. The thing is that every horse, so, so every horse, the way I've, I've come to understand it is every horse is like uh, minted with like a base number. And the only thing that right now is taken into account is distance preference. So it doesn't matter what gate they are in. It does not matter what time of day. It doesn't matter how many races that they've had. There's no fatigue. The horses currently live forever. There's so there's no like there's no like the horse is getting old. Right now, the only thing that gets taken into account is distance preference. So there's a thousand meter races all the way up to two thousand six hundred meter races, mm -hmm. and you have to if that's why I haven't raced any my Z my Z ones is because if I race it. I need to dedicate time to figure out if it's any good at anything. And then when I know what it's good at, or if, well, by the way, some of these horses are donkeys. Like you don't, you don't want to yep. go race it. How much money can I win racing? I've seen horses that have, that have uh, made uh, close to six figures already. With just one race? No, no. Oh, uh, uh, oh the biggest, actually, no. The, so the, it used to be like $5 entry up to $50 entry. But now there's like, I think I saw like a, a $5,000 entry. So it's going up. The most I've won in a race is like 200 bucks. 200 bucks. All right. So far. But that was when it was only to 50. So it sounds like it's way better to have the horses have digital sex than to race the horses. Currently. So the, my thesis around this, and a lot of people think, is that the genesis game of Zed is around breeding. So find the good horses and then breed them. Breed, you know. And by the way, you, you take someone like a Breathless Edge. If Breathless Edge, I don't know if Breathless Edge is a male or a female, but imagine it's a male and it goes into the stud farm that person could charge, you know, five grand per horse, 10 grand per horse, and they will sell all seven of them. No question. Because it's that good of a horse. When you're placing 50% of the time and you're winning 30% of the time, like, you know, or Ducky Mallon, which is another one, mm -hmm. like they're going to charge, they're going to be able to command a premium. So that's why the way you think about the, the breeding. So I think the breeding part, well, I, I think the Genesis horses is a breeding game. And I think the offspring is a racing game. So I think like the best horse is gonna be, because because there's Genesis horses. When you breed two Genesis horses, you create a legendary horse. Okay. When you when you breed legendary horses, you create, I think, either elite or exclusive. And then there's like two or three oh, so steps So there's down. like all these things. But Genesis are the best ones. Genesis are the original ones. They're the, the original ones minted. But does original mean best? 
Not necessarily. Okay. I've seen Z5s beat Z1s in races. Just because mm-hmm. you're a Z1 doesn't mean you're 100% going to win. Mm-hmm. So Because probability. Yeah, but also, like, I, I have a horse um, that is really good at 1,600-meter races. So I get What's really good odds. Name? You don't remember. Uh, okay. D- Dag Nabbit. Dag Nabbit. Did you name it? No. Okay. No. That's not, that's not a name I would I, name. I don't know. I, I I I bred some horses for my daughter. Okay. Uh, she's five. She likes she likes. Does she, she like go like watching the? Oh, we watch the, the games together. She comes right. home from school. She wants to race it. So the original horse that I raised. <laughs> and oh, by the I way, mean, it makes sense. When you when you breed Nakamotos together, you create a, another Nakamoto. But if you do like a Nakamoto and a Zabo, it creates a Zabo. If you do a Nakamoto and a, fili- a Finny, it creates a Finny. I mean, but whatever the lesser like yep. one is, is what the offspring is. Okay. Um. But I, I, I bred her a Nakamoto. Uh, so she is a Z2. Uh, by the way, when you do Z1 and Z1, you create a Z2. If you do a Z1 and a Z5, you create a Z6. Got it. Okay. Um, just simple math. Yeah, yeah. It's just you have to add up the what numbers. If you do two Z10s, this is Z20? Z20. I think you go up to like Z100, 200, something. Okay. It was a crazy, crazy number. Um, but anyway, so the I bred her. She has a Z2, I think a Z2 or Z3 Nakamoto. She named it Gemstone. And then Gemstone's a girl, so we had two two offspring, uh, Sparkles and Rainbows, both mentioned in the New York Times article. Five, and uh, which I think your daughter goes five. Up. She's five. Okay. Does your daughter go to school and say I own three horses? She does tell people she owns horses. Uh, she like she's like it's like not my dad. Like I own the horses. Yeah, but she doesn't say like it's a digital horse. She says like I own a horse. Yeah. For her, it's there's no it's difference. The same. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because they're mentioned in the New York Times article that was just this past week on Zed. And someone mentioned to me, he's like, good job getting the, the horse name in the New York Times. If you go and you put it on Discord or if you put it in the stud farm, it'd be like, you know, rainbows mentioned in the New York Times, come breed with it. Or, you know, you can like the value goes up for horses that are like publicly mentioned. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I, why don't the horses die? Uh, I think they've or de- get tired. I think, I think they're debating it. Yeah. But right now, like I, I've heard that they're gonna eventually add gate preference. I've heard that they're gonna eventually add weather. Uh, and I imagine they'll add fatigue. Mm-hmm. So you can't just go race though, because right now you could essentially take your horse. I could take Escobar, which I, I need to own, <laughs> and then I could basically race Escobar twenty times in a day, and it doesn't matter. So right now you can be in three races at one time, meaning three. Like there's a bunch. Oh, of- I don't even do twenty in a day. I could literally like three races all at the same time simultaneously. My horse. Yes, that's the most you can. It, it, they don't have to be simultaneously running, but the most you can enter is three horses at a given time. So once one of those races ends, you can enter another one. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you could, I mean, people, there are- Are there you know, horse millionaires? They're degenerate people sitting there all day racing their horses. But they're making money. Sometimes. Sometimes they're losing money. Yeah. You have to- I like you, the breeding game. The breeding game sounds a lot more up my breeding uh, alley. But, but the horse, the the, the racing game- there is a bit of skill to it because you have to figure out, you can't just like blindly race it. You have to look at the data. Um, you have to figure out, okay, when is this horse, is this horse doing really well? Like, okay, it's going 1400 meter races, but it's not winning. Um, but it's in but it's in first place when it, when you hit a thousand meters. So should I be, you know, only entering into a thousand meter races? Mm-hmm. You have to figure out a lot of that stuff. But once once you start looking at the data, like there's a lot of like saber metrics type of data. Mm-hmm. Once you start looking at the data, it's it's a game changer. I, I had two horses that I knew were decent, but I didn't know how decent they were. And then I looked at the odds and and like the detailed data. And I was like, oh, I have to race this only 1,800 meters and above, and this one only 1,800 meters below. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna actually make money. Mm-hmm. Um, if you enter enough races for five, 10, $15. Can you race while you're in the stud farm? Uh, no, I, th- I think you're not. I think you're not allowed to race while you're in the stud farm. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense. You're- you can't be racing and and breeding at and the same time. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I'm thinking of this game, it feels like the people who own the horses are a step below the people who own Zed, mm-hmm. right? But then there's this like middle ground. I want to own a track. How do I do that? So I've heard. So they they did a they announced a partnership with Atari. Okay. That Atari is going to be doing like branded a few branded horses like mm-hmm. Atari horses that are going to be like rare. And then I've heard that there's like, I mean, you could think about like the central land and things like that, where why not? Why not buy a track and and be a bookie? You know, like Zed won't be the bookie. Zed won't be DraftKings. Zed's the NBA. Zed's the NFL. We're the owners. We're 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 Mark Cuban. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're the we're the team owners. And Do you then, think Mark owns any horses? 
I don't know. I feel he'd say it. Yeah, no, I don't think he owns any horses. Sorry. Who owns the most horses? It's a great question. Funny story, which is sort yeah. of uh, uh, about this. Uh, I was I caught up with a friend recently, and I was, I was we were talking about like crypto and Zed and NFTs, and he's like, you know, my um my my sister married this guy, and he has been obsessed with Zed for like a few months, and like the family is about to have this interve- like he's just racing digital horses all day, and the family's about to have it, like an intervention with him, and I was like, send me the stable link, like send me like I want to see the stable, and um he sends it to me, it's like thirteen Z ones. Like, oh, like 40 Z2s. And he co-owns the stable with a bunch of people. I'm like, dude, this guy has like a multi-million dollar stable. Like, really? do not intervene with it. Like, let him let him do his thing. Yeah. Um, so there's a bunch of those out there. There's a bunch of people who have stocked up early. You know, I think I think a few months ago, a Z1 was going for like 5K, not 16K. So, you know, you could... It's a price appreciation. Yeah. So, and, and each drop the it goes up about 20 percent in terms of like the 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 floor value Mm -hmm. uh someone offered me 40k for one of my z1s i said no i think i think they'll be worth once the genesis horses are done i think z1s it's only a thousand of them genesis z1s i mean they're gonna go for 100k each minimum 100 on a million Uh, 100k 100 i I think like the worst z1 will be worth 100k like you can barely buy one for you know 30 40k right now wow all right, because there's not that many. So how do I own a track? Is that available? So yet? no, currently not available. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it, it will ever be, but okay. it seems like there's a lot they want to do. I mean, I, the way that Drew has always described it to me was that like they're building like the metaverse and like horse racing is just like the popular sport. Mm-hmm. But like I don't know why do why don't why can't they do like dog racing? Why can't they do dragon racing? Like they could do anything. So it's just like, okay, horses are well, like... Why don't they do human racing? <laughs> <laughs> they right? get, like, we'll I just mean, all put our avatars in there and just have foot races. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the question is, you know, can you make these horses better? Or do you, or, or like, are they are what they is are? Is there like a training process? Like, can I buy no, a shitty horse and then like, you know, like so make it I, stronger? You could theoretically buy a shitty horse that was incorrectly ran. So like if you see a horse that has really bad odds at 2,000 meters and the owner was only running at 2,000 meters and then you start racing at others and you realize, oh, this horse actually does really well at 1,200 meters. But you don't know that until it runs those horses. Yeah, so you've got, so that there's like a process to figure out, which is like, you should probably race the horse three to five times at every single level at the cheapest way you can. And then, and then okay, look at the data. Where am I getting good odds? It's also you get odds depending on who you're going up against. So if you go up yep. against Escobar and Breathless Edge and Ducky Malone, like you're not gonna have pretty bad odds. Yeah. Well, Escobar's undefeated. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's true anymore. Okay. We could look it up. All right. We well, I'm gonna up. own Escobar and it's gonna be undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, what's the end game here? Like, are people just gonna own the horses forever? Do they sell them and like cash out? Like, I don't know. I mean, listen, if if I can get uh if I can get two three k every two weeks from one horse. Um, now, now maybe eventually like the demand goes down, but again, Z ones only a thousand of them. You know, uh, Nakamoto's not many Nakamoto's in general. So if you can make that, that's the whole utility thing. If I can make money racing and breeding, I'm, I'm not going to sell my horses. Why would I sell them? I'll make my, all my money back that I spent just by doing those things, and then let just continue to sort of and then grow it from there. So do you what, reinvest or do you take the money out? I, I've currently it's all just an ETH, just reinvested. So I don't Re- reinvest it in ETH or in more horses. So like you have a an ETH account in Zed, mm-hmm. and then there's a W ETH account, which I, I don't know what W stands for. Wrapped. But yeah, so that that's where you buy, that's where you could buy the horses. Just for you, all you Ethereum people. <laughs> that, that's where you could buy the horses. Uh, you can uh, breed the horses, and you can um, uh, race the horses. You have to use uh, W uh, uh, ETH. So. Um, yeah, I just it goes in there, and I don't like the funny thing is <laughs> this joke I've been saying with a bunch of people is that like you go and you race right every night before I go to bed. I just I, I know the odds, I know which horses like I look for the right race, and I just put my horses in those races, and I go to bed, and I wake up, and I look at if I want anything. The the funny thing is because ETH has been blowing up, I put five dollars into a race, I lose, I have fifty more dollars in my account, so it's like it's like it's really bad for like degenerate gamblers because mm-hmm. like. It's just going up right yeah. now so because it's tied to it. Yeah. Either. So uh, can you like outfit the horse 
to look the way you want, like no. with like a saddle or anything. Like there's that. no jockeys. There's no saddle. It's you. You you have a, a coat. That's about it. Mm-hmm. But it, they're all 3D. I don't know if you've seen a race go, yeah, yeah. but like it's beautiful. It's pretty cool. And they got like the cool camera angle, and yeah. it looks kind of futuristic, a little Ready Player One esque, right? And they're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. So I mean, I I don't know where Z 100 percent is going. Is it only ever going to be horses? Are they going to do other things? But there's a lot of just value and utility of just the horse stuff. So I've been having fun. Um, and like, I think, yeah, you can make a lot of money off it. I think um, owning a, a track or, or you know, like like Zed, Zed, I don't think is ever going to get into the gambling side of it. The DraftKings and the, and the fan duels of the world are going to go and, and offer that, mm-hmm. uh, the bookies of the world. And like, can you buy a track and then charge, get a fee for everyone who races on your track? I think probably. Why not? Yeah. Like, what do you, you what do you do on a day to day basis? Me? We sat here and we've talked about digital horses. Tell us about the company. Oh yeah, yeah, no. So I have a company called Upstream. We're building like you know LinkedIn Groups 2.0. We're going mm-hmm. after professional networks. Basically, LinkedIn has had a monopoly for the past like eighteen years, and you know people like dunk on them all the time. Oh, LinkedIn sucks. This that. I have a lot of respect for them. I think the core product is really strong. The digital resume. I mean, there's a reason why, you know. They have a monopoly. It's, it, it, it's a great product. You know, I can look you up and see your past history, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But they've dropped the ball on a few things. Uh, the biggest, I think, you know, being who do you know and how well do you know them? They killed their API a few years ago for, for some good reasons, but I think there's a platform that could be built on a professional network. And then what we're starting with is professional groups. Like nobody uses LinkedIn groups, right? You know, link, nobody actually even knows LinkedIn groups is a thing. I was just going to say, don't even know what that is. Yeah, exactly. Anyone who's building a professional community is doing it on Slack. They're doing it on WhatsApp. They're doing it on Telegram. They're doing it on Discord. And I love all those products. I use them all. They're just not really meant for professional community. Um, so that's where we started. And then when COVID hit, we, you know, like when you think of, there's like two pieces to top stream. One is the professional and like, uh, sorry, the the community and group side. The other is the professional side. In that professional side, there's like a life cycle, meeting new people, socializing, following up with people, reaching out to people, reconnecting with people. That's all part of like the professional life cycle. We're playing right now in the meeting new people, socializing. Mm-hmm. So we do this event. Uh, we have this product called Upstream Events. They're virtual events. They're usually 20 to 30 minutes. We typically have a guest speaker the first 10, 15 minutes. And then the second half of it is matchmaking. And it's been really popular during COVID. Uh, we've got, you know, um, you know, thousands of people coming and meeting each other every week. Mm-hmm. And it's just been, it's been really popular. It's like that, like during COVID, it was really hard to meet people unless you're like in Miami. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's just like, you know, that, so he, he didn't say it, but what he meant was because Miami was open, everyone else was closed. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, you know, I, the joke is like everyone in Miami already had COVID. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it could, you know, it's a herd immunity already here. No, uh, there, there's definitely some, some good stuff and bad stuff being here. Uh, we, I moved my family. I have a wife and two daughters. We moved down here in July. It's been really nice. But anyway, so this company Upstream started it in the beginning of 2020, me and my co-founder. Before that, I had a company called Social Rank, social media analytics company. We sold it at the end of 2019. Uh, we just started uh, Upstream. We uh, we haven't uh, announced yet, but we raised a little bit of money. And, you know, we've got a team of nine awesome people and we're trying to build the, the next professional network. So you basically, you took your family your company and your digital horses and you moved to Miami, right? I bought the digital horses down here, but yes. <laughs> uh, I, I was born and raised in New York, lived there my whole life, mm-hmm. uh, grew up on, in Manhattan. If you're successful with Upstream, what does this turn into, right? Like in terms of, is it literally LinkedIn, but a platform where people can come and build on top of the social graph and it's all for professionals and there's events and kind of like you just like rebuild it for quote unquote, the modern age or like today? Yeah, so we started on mobile. So it was like a mobile first uh, play, but... Yeah, no, what does success mean? I mean, building a professional network, building a platform. So like events are really cool and events are really popular, but it's just a piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a big piece. Like every successful community should have events, virtual events, Mm in-person events, et cetera. Um, But it's just a little piece of the puzzle. I mean, you know, I have a roadmap for the next five, 10 years in my brain. To be honest, I want to do this for the rest of my life. I'm not uh, like, you know, we only met each other a few months ago, but we sort of productize me 
-hmm. Like this, this is a, a big piece of it is around giving and getting help, mm -hmm. meeting new people professionally. I love that. That's what I do every day. So if someone like a LinkedIn came along and they're like, hey, we want you to run LinkedIn groups and make it something that people actually know what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather just do this. I'd rather just go out and raise more money and, and try to build a bigger company. The, a lot of the, the, the ways I think about it is there's, there's three pieces. There's live and synchronous, mm -hmm. which is like these events. Then there's like asynchronous, which is like posting asks and eventually there'll be more like asynchronous things mm -hmm. on upstream. And then the third is utility. So one of the things that we're thinking about right now a lot is like, what type of utility can you provide people? Maybe it's not directly tied to community, but like, who do you know and how well you know them? Like how many times do people hit you up and like, hey, I saw that you're connected to this person at uh, on LinkedIn. Like, can you make an intro? And you're like, I don't even know who that person is. Like, I have to go look back, figure out how I met that person. And there's a bunch of really easy ways to figure that out. Um, a lot of people who've gone after that problem have gone about it in the in the wrong ways. They mm -hmm. they try to build like new address books or they try to build like these souped up things that take like a week for it to load and it just never really works. The closest probably is like Affinity CRM. They've done a decent job at the the digital sort of. Um, uh, connection, like who do you know, frequency of connection. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're working on some stuff now that hopefully will be available in the summer around like, you know, strength of relationship and who you know, how well you know that. And I think that just balloons into a much bigger opportunity. Completely agree. I think it's a smart idea. Thanks, man. All right. I got three questions before yeah. I let you go. Sure. Uh, most important book you've ever read? Oh, man. Most important book. I've been I've been I've been slacking on the books. I mean, I, I read this book uh, uh, back in I wrote my college. I don't even remember what it was, what it was called, but it was uh, it was like the seamstress. I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to edit this because I'm, I'm not remembering the name of the book. I wrote my college essay about it, but it, it had a profound impact on me at the time. But the fact that I can't even remember it, I guess, means something. Yeah. Um, let me think. Uh, what's the second question? Let me, let me think. About second book. question is sleep. So our friends over at eight sleep. I got this bed. Uh, it's freezing cold, right? It's a thermal yeah. regulated bed. I sleep like five or six hours. My wife really wanted to like murder me. Uh, now I sleep like eight or nine hours and it's been like the most life-changing thing ever. Um, and hopefully they're gonna be able to make it so you feel the same way after seven hours or six hours of sleep. Uh, what is your sleep schedule? It is you really bad. You have two, young, two kids, young kids, right? Yeah. It is very bad. Okay. I need it. I need like a what? sleep. I do. Like, like how bad? It's bad. over under five hours a night. Around five. Oh, all right. But I, so I. That's like bed. borderline horrendous. Yeah. No, like, I go to bed late, five but I wake atrocious. up late. I, I go to bed wait, late, but I wake up late. Okay. So I typically go to bed between. It'll be really nice if I get to bed at one. I usually go to bed two, three. Oh, wow. So like really like a night owl. But then, yeah, I, I do my best work between 10 and two. I mean, I, you know. Okay. I feel like that's, you know, you're not supposed to say that type of stuff anymore, like building companies, but like, it's the truth. Like I just, that's how I, okay. uh, that's how, how I, I function. And then what time do you wake up? Usually eight, nine. All right. So like five I to trained, six hours. I trained my two daughters to wake up at eight or later. That was oh, the best thing I ever did. Yeah, that's not um, bad. So it's not that bad, but I know I need more sleep. I usually catch up on the weekends. Got it. All right. Third question. Aliens. Are you a believer or a non-believer? I think statistically something has to exist out there. You like it's just like when you ever if you ever look at like where Earth is compared to the whole solar system and mm -hmm. galaxy. I mean, it's like just seems it just seems impossible that we're not like that we're the only people ever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone else is still alive. I don't know if we can actually get to them at a time like you know because the distance might be too far away. They may yeah. be too far away, but I think it's probabilistically really low. I think what what likely the chance is there's a lot of other Earths out there and they can't see beyond their galaxy. Yeah, that's probably true. And we can't so see we them. can't see them. They can't see us. It's just too far away. We sort of know that there's a lot of stuff out there, but we can't. We don't have means of communication. Uh, you're gonna get to ask me one question to finish, but uh, my favorite statistic or uh, data point on all of space is that when I was in high school, there was nine planets, including Pluto. Now there's over a thousand. Yeah. Where did the rest of them come from? <laughs> like my only guess is that technology got way better so like we can have better can like, surveillance you know of the solar system or whatever but like, like that's a pretty big jump yeah no it, it, <laughs> like it, from nine to a thousand <laughs> yeah I, i'm i it seems unlikely that we're alone the question is if they get to us before we get to them are we in trouble you know so 
How do you know they haven't been here? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a there's a pretty senior person from I think it was either Israel or Ken or whatever that like, you you probably if you ask this question the, probably, the intergalactic federation yeah, I don't know how you know that that sounds a little bit like, for those that don't know there's a guy I think it's from Israel he uh, was like in charge of space or whatever yeah like basically the equivalent of like the space force and he's like oh yeah we are all are in the intergalactic federation and uh, we just don't want to tell anyone yet yeah and like and but he's a little bit older may, maybe a little he might he may be a little going a little crazy uh, but then then he said some things that were like well yeah why did Trump like la- launch Space Force out of nowhere. Like, you know what I mean? That was like really a random thing. Like, maybe there is something to it. Maybe, maybe, maybe there is. I don't know. I don't, I don't I don't know. And like, I feel like if there was, like, they would try to be hidden, but it's so hard to hide things these days. Yeah. You I know? Agree. But like the UFO stuff has been crazy with like them releasing, like, we don't know what this was. We don't know what that was. So like, maybe... I I I I won't I will, I will, I'm not on the side of saying like no. Yeah, I'm the same way. But I'm not on like I love but, to see it. Yeah, you're not on the like I met one. Yeah, but like you know that Blink One Eighty Two guy like how like vindicated must he feel like he stopped making oh, yeah. music and then like went all in on aliens and like like he's not wrong. Yeah, it's pretty cool. By the way, back to the first question, I wouldn't say a book. Um, I would say the best thing that I've read is uh, the old Mark and Dreesen posts. Oh. from from his blog i'm more of a blog sort of tweet reader <laughs> mm-hmm. uh but um his 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 old stuff still holds up like just like just his thoughts on building a company and networks and all that stuff is just it's timeless i mean it's archived somewhere the the p market blog mm-hmm. but that that's probably the best thing i've read um that's actually a great suggestion yeah all right where can uh well first of all what question do you have for me um, so something we ask every time on, on Upstream when we have a guest speaker, we, we ask, what do you need help with? Usually there's like a handful of people there and we say like, you could be hiring somebody, you could want to help. We're going to hang a 65 inch screen television, but I got a guy coming today, but that's what I need help with right now because <laughs> I'm scared that I'm going to screw it up. <laughs> okay. You need help with that. Anything, anything you need help with that maybe someone can help you? Uh, no, send me the best investment deals. <laughs> okay. No, that, that's a good one. Send the best yeah. companies. Yeah, I mean that's like the easiest thing. Uh, where can we send people to find you on the internet? On uh, Twitter, I'm at AJT. How um, did you get that? That's a whole other story. Okay. So I had a friend. That, I'll, I'll tell a quick version of it. Right. I had a friend at Twitter. She was leaving, um, and she uh, she hit me up, and she had it was still back in the day when you could like grab handles if you like mm-hmm. it was inactive. So she's like, I'm leaving. My last day is like next week. Make a list of handles you want. And uh, and and send them to me and and just have a handle I could swap it with, and if I can get it, I'll get it. Um, that's not how I got AJT. I got it. I got that from her early on, but that haul I got. Uh, I own at Truth on Twitter. I'm just sitting on it. I, I gave Did it to like, the Biden campaign a little bit. They played with it during the election. They got it up to like 250 thousand followers. And then I thought I was getting it back with 250,000 followers. And then they worked with Twitter to wipe it and gave me back with zero followers. I was like, guys, I gave it to you because I thought I, I like, come on. Wow. That was that was a big disappointment. I mean, I, I didn't ask them not to wipe it, but like the expectation was I was giving them to get yep. back a big account. Um, but I, 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 I would understand how they wouldn't want, like, let's say I became crazy and I started posting like, you know, QAnon stuff or whatever. From at truth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. They don't want to be associated with that. Yep. Um, so I understand. I was just upset. I own a bunch of random ones. Uh, I My daughters have at Kira. Mm-hmm. She's Her name's Kira. And then at JD. And her name's Jade. So I have, uh, I've got a bunch. Oh, I have at NYK. The Knicks are NY Knicks. I'm NYK. Winning record this year, right? Yeah. I'm a little nervous. We've got eight games to go. It looks good. But I, in, in, I'm just like I'm so fearful of like a collapse, and like a eight, eight game losing streak out of the playoffs. We haven't clinched yet or anything, so and it's hard teams. I mean, going up against tonight Denver, then uh, Cl- uh, Phoenix, uh, Clippers, Lakers, Boston. Like that's not. We'll see. It's. I mean, we'll I, I'm really happy how they're playing. But I'm just, you know, it would be it, such it would a be, Nick thing. It would be a be, Nick thing. So lose to the just, last eight games and, and just, you know. Be whoops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be, All right. Where can we see people to find you other than at AJT? At AJT uh, on Upstream uh, at UpstreamApp.com or you can download in the App Store. Where else am I on the internet? Um, 
LinkedIn. Should, should you should send people yeah, to LinkedIn? Nah, you, you can. By the way, I have respect for LinkedIn. I, I'm not. We're not trying to replace them today, but tomorrow. You know what I yeah. mean? Like we want to get big um, before we really go after anything they do that's core. But yeah, no, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on. Uh, I'm on. I think I'm on. I'm on, I'm on everything. But uh, Twitter is where I spend most of my time. Awesome, man. Listen, thank you so much for doing this. I'll do it again in the future. Yeah, anytime.